I'm Kim Blaupus, and I'm here to share with you something that will revolutionize your understanding of your health. If you're an individual trying to better understand what it takes to change your health, or a practitioner trying to better communicate the commitment to wellness, then this video is for you. You will learn how classical Chinese medicine views disease, why disease exists, and how disease transmits throughout your body. You will learn things that you can do to help yourself. You will learn how disease is more than just the physical symptoms and why treating solely the physical symptoms is shortchanging yourself. This video is the start of your personal revolution to healing yourself. Let's take a look at how Chinese medicine views disease. Once you get the lay of the land, you can put your own map together to find your way to your own personal healing. Chinese medicine started from the statement that everything is interrelated. Today we can look at science and see these relationships from something as basic as the need for sunlight to warm the earth, grow food, ensure our survival, to more subtle relationships like the commonality of all living matter. 25 of the 92 chemical elements listed on the periodic table are essential for life. Of these 25, four make up 95% of living matter. They are oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Let's start with the concept of us. That's right, you and me. We are part of the human race. We exist on a physical plane with the earth below us and the heavens above us. We are between heaven and earth. These three items have very special meaning in classical Chinese medicine. Through their relationships within themselves and with each other, Chinese medicine starts to explain some of the fundamental concepts. Here is an example of how this works. Starting with the Earth. The Earth has form that we can see and touch. Of the three, the Earth is the most solid. The soil of the Earth is the foundation of life. Life requires soil for nutrition. From healthy soil emerges plants that nourish healthy life forms. In winter, seeds lay dormant deep in the soil, finalizing their preparations to come forth in spring. Water keeps everything moist and pliable and makes up a large part of each life. The earth is labeled as yin. Looking at our description of the earth, we can start to explain what it means to be yin. Yin not only supports life, it is necessary in order to have life. Without its nourishing strength, life would not be able to exist on this planet. Yin also rules our need to rest or lay dormant. Resting is mandatory to allow for rejuvenation. Like resting meat after cooking, rest allows the juices to remain in the meat. Yin rules over things we need to keep a physical body. Let's look at the heavens. Most of the heavens lack form we can see or touch, and the heavens are the least solid of the three. The sun sits in space giving out energy in the form of light and heat. The energy of the sun motivates life, just as oxygen in the atmosphere gives us breath, enabling us to live. The sun provides the needed energy for plants to spring forth from the ground. Chinese medicine labels the heavens as yang. Looking at our description of the heavens, we can begin to understand what it means to be yang. 
Yang seems to be the energy that is the spark of life. That unknown constant that allows us to take a bag of chemicals and spark life into it. Yang, like energy, is about activity. Yang may not be seen or felt, yet its energy has an effect on our behavior. Yin and Yang are fundamental to Chinese medicine and are used to describe everything as these two concepts make up everything. Between Yin and Yang is the human race. The human race has both Yin and Yang and needs both of these items to exist. We need the nutritional foundation of Yin to support our physical form and the spark of life from Yang to animate our physical bodies. How Yin and Yang exist in our bodies starts at four high-level categories, with each category having more or less Yin or Yang. The four categories are the physical body, the emotions, the spirit, and the Tao. Comparing each category, the physical body is the most yin. Similar to the earth, the physical body has shape and form. Next comes the emotions. The emotions, like the atmosphere, have a very real influence on the body. The emotions cannot be seen, yet their influence animates our facial features and actions. Like increasing barometric pressure, Increased emotional stress can feel like being stuck in a pressure cooker. Emotions are more yang within a yin physical body. More yang still is the spirit. In Chinese medicine, the spirit is considered the balance of the five yin organs in our body. The spirit works like intent and is the underlying guiding principle of our lives. And then there is the Tao. The Tao is a spark of life and is Yang. Classical Chinese medicine tracks disease by looking at the interaction of these four items inside of us. To see how emotions impact our physical body, look at what happens when something pisses you off. It can be anything. Notice how the body responds to anger. There are a number of physical symptoms that happen when we get angry. The chest might tighten. The blood pressure increases. Maybe you get a headache. Your hands sweat or your stomach hurts. You cry. You can't stop snapping at people. Along with the physical symptoms is the emotional acknowledgement that you are angry. Sometimes we are so wrapped up in living that we might be expressing all the physical symptoms before we suddenly realize that we're pissed off. Anger expressed every now and again is healthy, but suppressed or constant is not healthy. And when it's unhealthy, the physical responses in our body begin to take a toll. Slowly, our health deteriorates and more severe health symptoms show up like high blood pressure, ulcers, or heart disease. You might notice that what pisses you off doesn't piss off other people. You might notice what pisses off your best friend or your spouse doesn't piss you off. You might find it confusing that your best friend or spouse gets angry over a certain situation. In general, Unhealthy anger is a response to a situation where we felt we did not have the power to change it. Trapped in the situation and forced to experience it over and over again, the response becomes ingrained and automatic. Experiencing a situation a few times usually doesn't have a permanent effect on us. It's when we are forced to deal with an unfair situation over and over over again that it changes our perception becomes ingrained and becomes a knee-jerk response and when our responses become ingrained inflexible and a knee-jerk response 
they have impacted our spirit and how we respond to the world. When that happens, the emotions take over and impact our physical body. With Western medicine, we are able to immediately impact the expression of many diseases, yet we usually are not able to heal the disease because as soon as we stop taking the medications, the symptoms come right back. Over time, the symptoms become more severe because we haven't changed anything. We increase our medications, we get side effects, which cause us to take even more medications, and every once in a while we end up in the hospital, our body continues to break down, we gain weight, pick up arthritis, and more and more things. In Chinese medicine, disease has a root and a branch. The root deals with rebalancing the organs, or what we had talked about as the spirit. In order to address disease, the spirit must be put back into alignment. The branch may be eliminating a symptom. The physical, emotional, and spiritual are all addressed in Chinese medicine, usually without your conscious knowledge. You just notice that things that used to bother you are not bothering you anymore. The easiest and cheapest way to get exposure to Chinese medicine is through group acupuncture, Chinese medical schools, or you may be able to find a Chinese pharmacy which has a practitioner in the store. The pros to these three options is cost. The cons are that group ac acupuncture lacks an individual focus, Chinese medical schools have students practicing and that's the point of an internship, and at the Chinese pharmacy it may be difficult to get treatment from the same person. All three of these options will allow you to experience Chinese medicine, but they're also usually only available in large cities. By far, the most common method of experiencing Chinese medicine is through local practitioners. I hope this video helped you better understand the Chinese medical perspective on disease, how disease is created in our bodies, and some of the things you can do to change yourself. If you found this video helpful, interesting, worthwhile, please click on the like button below and leave a comment on what you liked, your thoughts, or other things you would like to see. For now, this is Kim Blaubus from Best Acupuncture wishing you a wonderful day.